what will this do to transportation? Well, first of all, it cuts your fuel bill right away. It cuts out the pollution. And the next thing is, it has other advantages. We can develop the short back of the vehicle to be charged, so that if a vehicle is coming past you, you won't pull out, you can't pull out in front of him and knock him. Again, if you're pulling out, he can't pull out. It's called uh, plate charge states, which controls, the computer controls the vehicle on this charge plate system. So it means that you could run traffic faster, more accurate with less accidents. In fact, there shouldn't be any accidents at all if every vehicle was operating on the same system. So you cut down your expense to run. You can just switch on, go, and that's what the weather condition is. You go where you like, and that's how many miles away you go there. There's no stopping to charge up, no expense to do it. What we're looking at is people who got to travel overseas to work. If you had faster and quicker transport systems, it went, say, from England to New Zealand in 30 minutes, to America in 15, 20 minutes, people could go and work overseas and still come back for the night. So there's a lot of, uh, from transport, from the transport side... Uh, uh, why, why would this be possible? I mean, uh, how, how will this work? How do they get to Well, the, the, the discs minutes? that we call them, the slender discs, we call them IGVs now for short, or inverse gravity. Because they're clean to begin with, they don't need to be refueled. That means that as soon as you can load them, you can go to wherever you want. Uh, because it makes what we call a hollow tube above it. It travels up this tube. When you tilt the vehicle to take a straight flight path, it creates its own vacuum. So it's traveling. So you don't have noise. So an airport wouldn't be noisy at all with these crafts there. But the fact that you can travel at any speed because you're in a vacuum, it doesn't affect anything or anybody. Uh, it's clean, it's smooth, there's none of this bumping up and down all the time. And I, I, the way I look at it is it's very important from the world of business if you can give people cheap travel and safe travel and the fact that they know they won't be delayed as at present because weather conditions Sorry, we can't take off, there's a thunderstorm going on. We have to wait till it's clear. You won't have that problem because thunderstorms don't bother this craft. Uh, hail, or rain or anything like that doesn't affect the craft. What we're looking at, what I'm concerned with is clean technology, cheap. We want it cheap. Uh, if we look at uh, a disc carrying, say, 3,000 people to Australia for holiday, you could say that £10 return ticket would be a big profit making on such a craft. You would pack it. People for once could go to Australia, same Australia to England, they could come to England, see England. They'd never, probably never see England, England in their life if they, if at the present day rates of cost. And the fact that you could land the IGV anywhere, that's another beautiful thing about it. So you can go out to emergencies and deal with emergencies. Um, in California, I did speak to a fire chief there, where they had a big fire going. I said, well, if you had one of these crafts, you could come over the fire and knock it out. Because if you're pumping more electrons down at the ground than being emitted, the fire dies back. You say, we are too keen looking at the oxygen side of a fire. But what we should forget is what makes it hotter and hotter. Not the oxygen. It's the fact that more electrons are leaving the area, so there's more space for the remaining electrons to build up bigger charges, so when they bump each other, they release this energy, causing the temperature to go up. So if you put more energy in than going out, you must be cooling it down. And if you get to a given point, it's going to go out, because it's too cold to burn. Now let's look at another point. Airports, clouded in, clouds thick, Pilots are coming in on instruments only because they can't see. A model like this just flying around on cloudy days get rid of all the rain because as you pass through clouds it's so cold that the water just claps inwards, solid, and too quick it cracks and falls. So you have a quick hailstorm, sky's clear, so you can keep the air filled clear. Now the reverse way, 
a storm's coming in, it's going to do a lot of damage. You send out a radio control model, pass through the storm, knock the hell out of it. And as much as you want to knock. For, so you don't get the damage done. Now if we look at another case, Africa. Clouds roll over, nothing falls. Alright, you send out the model, pass through it, it'll fall. Because it's the speed at which that water can contract in freezing that will make it fall in that area. So they would get whatever water. If we look again at a serious point of getting water to people, two thirds of the world's fresh water is stored at the poles as frozen water. You cut it. The problem is, by normal shipping, it would be a costly job to ship the blocks of water to Africa for, to meet their requirements because a lot of it would melt. This craft, because of the cold surrounding, would hold, hold every drop of that ice to you deliver it to the place. So, looking at all the advantages, it is a wonderful piece of technology. Even from the home, from the car, even to flight. Now, for scientists, you will always get the opposition effect. Opposite effect. It can't be. Because it wasn't made there. They never made it. And they have this wall around them. They keep around and make themselves important. It can't be done because we say so. Now, we have uh, already filmed for Hollywood. It's a lot of proof. After it, they went to the medical board and told them about this. And this is what they said on TV. The medical board asked us, is this man a doctor? And we said, we don't think so. Oh, then it can't be done. Now, a simple word. Is he a doctor? No, then it can't be done. We're not interested. Another incident, I did a demonstration in Ottawa, on, t on the television there, on the network. And one uh, minister from Washington who saw it for the atomic uh, power station rushed over to the, minister, uh, to the government's laboratory and told him about this demonstration. And I said, he said, now I'm repeating what the man told me, he said, he will not move out that seat to see any magnetic device that is claimed to be different because for a thousand years nobody's changed the rules of magnetism. Right, so the chap said, bring it, I'll take you to the research laboratory. You show them. We arrived there. Mr. Haley, the man himself from Washington Power Station, stood there. I was sort of here in front of him. He sort of sat cockeyed with his elbow on the table. The man said to him, oh, this is the man from England. Uh -huh. Just like that. My felt like going. So the chap told me, put it on the desk. So I put it on the desk. You see, normally you can't hear nothing, but you can feel through the elbow vibration on a wooden desk. And he was feeling this. Suddenly he looked around and he looked at it. Do you know what you've done? No. That's perpetual motion. I said, well, I'm glad you said that. If I said that, you'd kick me out. So he called some more officials there to see this. So he said to me, if you market this, you'll get four Nobel Prizes at least. I said, well, that's what I'm here for. We need some funds to do it. We can't give you no funding. Why not? You think the work you'll make us, we'd have to write all the books again, technical books. So, for the sake of a bit of work, you, 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 me, are barred from having this device. That's what he's saying. Because you're going to make him a bit of work. He had to rewrite the technical books again. I think that's disgusting. A man at the top of official body who sh should fund research work that is better for mankind tells you he won't back you because of this. The Prime Minister I also met in Canada and the whole cabinet. They, we had dinner and they said they'd seen the TV programme and that's exactly what they needed in Canada. I said, well, can you help me to get the funds to do it? We can't. You have to go to the Hydro Man. But before you go, let me tell you, they won't back it. You see, they have invested millions into making these dams for the hydro power. They won't want that to come in the country.
to cut loose from their profits. So we are always up against the technology that's here. And people got to make so much profit from it before a new one can come in. And that is a pity. And all my life I've really been sort of demonstrating something that's the answer to all our problems, yet nobody wants to back it because they're afraid of the big boys. That's what it boiled down to. Hovercraft International, we wrote them and they replied, we would love to fund this work, but we would have to get funds from the big companies. No doubt you've already been to them, which of course we had. And they said they wouldn't back this because their money is tied up in petrol and oil. So wherever I turn, I always had this problem. British Railway had started developing the advanced passenger train. I went up to Derby, met them, told them that I uh, would like funding to make a train working on this system. In fact, I took a model system up to them to show them. They said to me, we can't fund you. You build a full-scale train. We will give you the track to run it on. Now, if the system don't interfere with the signaling system, we'll back it. Now, they've spent millions on that advanced passenger train. Where is it? Won't work on British lines. Here they had a system that would have worked on, British, on the British rail system. Again, you've got your train, t uh, train system. You come through, you've built this wonderful tunnel to go from France to England so they can get the continent. What do they do? They have three separate power systems. All that cabling, all those substations, all this wear and tear, where they could have put this power unit on the front and rear end of the trains and could run over all the track systems without having to change the power system. So they waste millions of pounds, unnecessary. To develop this, we reckon it would cost us about four million pounds to develop a powerful machine to tip out the sort of power to feed a, a city. Now, a machine like that would power their trains any length they want, with no trouble at all and that would go on working day and night and cost nothing to run. All they would do, they could drop their fares, fill their trains daily with no trouble. But they just won't venture out. Up here at the roundabout, that's the last bit of the RAF base, when they went to build houses there, I went to the builders, I said, look, can we build this house here? Oh no, they said, why not? They said, who would live in it? It's so advanced. They'd be frightened to live in it. So are you telling me that if I said to you, would you move in this for a month and evaluate what you think of it, that at the end of the month you'll get out of it, costing you nothing in overheads, you've got all the power you want, clean water, you know it's clean, toilet system, it's all running, you've got no bills, everything is self-contained. Are you telling me you wouldn't go in that house and live? There's something wrong with these people. What about the time where every, every many things got destroyed in your house? How did this happen? Well, what happened was that, uh, that we were doing our last show before we started the three-man uh, craft that we wanted to build. We got everything ready to start the building. The press came along and they said, next time we meet you, you'll be Sir John. Because the wife heard that. So she wanted the job stopped. She decided it was time to stop this work. So she set up a, a effort with the electric board to get it stopped. And of course they did, they came, they saw we had electricity, the meter wasn't working. So immediately they said to the CID, he's stealing electricity. No, they've disconnected all the cables. Electric was still there. They said he must be getting it from the street light. So she had a case, she got the job stuff. And while I was being detained, while they did an investigation, she got everything destroyed. She went to the authorities and said, look, do I have to have all the space stuff in my home? Oh no, no, get rid of it. That's all she wanted. The fire brigade told me, fire's burnt for four days and four nights. They were on standby in case they got out of control. I was told by neighbours that vehicles arrived at the house daily and were stripping the house of all my stuff. 